much as Jake. They are rolling again. Should be good takeoff. Good shot. Get yourself out there. coming at you. What we think, what what happened yesterday that caused the delay of the flight to, to until today, uh, we actually ran into this, this a couple of electrical right problems that uh, were a little bit hard to uh, sort through. Uh, we eventually did, obviously, because we're back in flight. Uh, but uh, in the troubleshooting of those, we had to boot uh, power down the computer, uh, just like you do with your uh, home computer. If it's not working, usually you shut it off and cycle power. Uh, uh, fortunately, uh, in your home computer, it takes a few minutes to boot back up. With our computer, it takes about 40 minutes, and that's because it's doing a whole, lot of, a whole lot of things to make sure it's ready to actually go online. Uh, we had to do that twice, and that chewed up about 80 minutes. Our launch window is only from 2 to 4 in the afternoon, and it's a very uh, rigid window. And by the time we got our problem sorted out, uh, we actually couldn't have gotten out to the launch point in time. and. Uh, and so we scrubbed for that day, uh, but we're back obviously today, and everything's looking real good at this point. And with an on-time takeoff, now I understand. So I understand with that on-time takeoff, now we have not only one pass but a couple passes if we want to take it out of the Pacific. Could you explain what that means? That's right. We. Uh, all throughout the flight, uh, we are following a very, very precise checklist of, uh, of steps that we're taking. 
and you'll hear uh, Mission Controller Dave McAllister calling out every once in a while. We are at step 3.1, just to make sure everybody is on the same page with the exact location of where we're at in the Okay, Keith, I'll cut that off, and uh, we've gone to our racetrack now, and we are at 8 power. Uh, we are at 30 minutes at this point, and uh, we're going to begin our countdown clock here in the control room. And as we begin that sweeping turn back to the east. <laughs> And you can see from our visualization, uh, at 100 feet higher in altitude, things like that. So we try and hit the precise uh, launch conditions that we're after. And then after they complete this, they'll head back up toward the west to over the Pacific, correct? That's correct. Uh, and we'll go through our final rundown to launch. Uh, it takes about nine minutes. And during that time, a lot of things are going on. Uh, we have dozens of engineers that are watching the systems on board and are giving the final go, no go prior to launch. And, and, and Griff, now might be a good time to explain while the uh, chase plane is getting back into position to reacquire the B 52 and the X 43A. There was, uh, there was uh, a lot of time for that. I'm not sure and uh, we are now approaching the launch point in reverse direction of the launch condition. Sorry about that. So the resistance will be being removed there. Now, for now on the, on the map, correct? That's right, Keith. Uh, we will begin our large sweeping turn back up to the west. And uh, things are going to get really busy here in a few minutes as the engineers make their final go, no go checks on all the systems and data data on board the on board the launch vehicle and research vehicle. I can tell you from first hand experience that the control room is an absolute absolute peak performance right now. Folks are focused on their on their displays, making those go no go calls. Uh, Garbage <laughs> 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 NASA 2 copies all. NASA 2. Starboard now. Rudder now. Port now. NASA 2. In sleep now. Launch on my mark in five, four, 
find my voice, Keith, I'll, I'll try and explain what we just saw. It was an absolutely tremendous experience. We, uh, we had a beautiful boost separated. Anyway, research vehicle was absolutely rock solid, stable. Uh, fuel came on as expected and off uh, all indications now we had a successful experiment. Uh, one thing I should let people know is that as the research vehicle goes over the horizon, we will begin to lose data. We expect that. That is absolutely nominal. And uh, we are acquiring data on the on the P3 Orion at downrange as, as we speak, and that data will be available for researchers. I cannot hardly explain my my excitement at this point, and it's it's absolutely overwhelming to uh, to see this come to conclusion. Now, very soon we hope to have video of the actual separation taken from the nose of the booster rocket at separation. Meanwhile. Uh, what are we seeing here in the state of visualization? We're, we're back actually to the live mission now, right? That's correct. We are going down through Mach 8. Uh, we will do what's called a parameter identification maneuver at about every Mach number. Uh, that we will, there you see the vehicle moving in a pre-described manner. It allows us to uh, better identify the forces and moments on the research vehicle at hypersonic speeds. This thing's flying at Mach 8 still. Uh, and we are continuing to acquire data as we continue downstream into the ocean for final splashdown. So this is an important secondary research objective to, to get data on aerodynamics of flying a vehicle shaped like this at these speeds after the apparently successful test of the scramjet engine. Absolutely, Keith. These are uh, very important maneuvers that allow us to better understand the aerodynamics of these hypersonic vehicles and this very slant, uh, thin, slender shape as it uh, continues to cruise down. And uh, we are heading down quickly to Mach 7. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes, actually, to get back down to the ocean as we continue our descent. Uh, and still in very controlled, uh, stable flight of the research vehicle. Uh, obviously, all systems are performing as expected. We have plenty of, uh, uh, plenty of authority in the control surfaces. At the